Alright, this is the Princess Diana, Princess of Wales, the People's Princess, um, reading. Um, very interesting to channel her energy. It's kind of, uh, aloof, kind of regal in a way, and then kind of elusive, if, if you know what I mean. Um, kind of a shy energy, but all the same, it... It, it, it's a pretty interesting energy. It's like diplomatic almost. Um, but in like a shy, keen way, which is pretty cool. Um, so she was an activist. She did a lot of um, humanitarian work. Um, and that's kind of what she's best known for. She, she was like, she wanted to be one of the people, but she wanted to keep her personal life and her family out of the public eye so that they could be safe and have like family life that was normal so that they can connect with people I guess um, without being taken out of that or being prideful or put in ego so uh, hmm. uh, she had a lot to say too a lot of advice a lot of astrology stuff I picked up. Anyway, let's get into the tarot cards. Um, so she got the watery. I, I believe that she was a cancer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so there's going to be probably a lot of water energy, but, you know. Cooperation, the ability to open people's hearts. Yep. Um, we have the shield. The shield is um, protection, a defensive measure to maintain harmony. Um, shot. The focus on goals. Uh, the twins. Um, your soulmate's appearance. So. There is a lot of stuff around this, um, very, you know, controversial. Um, so. And then we have the Two of Wands in reverse. Great sadness as a monumental loss of faith, imprisonment by others' actions, a surprise. Um, and I do believe that this has everything to do with Paris, France, um, during the time of the car crash in that tunnel. Um, I believe that's what the playing card was about. Um, let's see. Because the cloud cards are like the the day before is how I'm reading it. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Um, possible run of bad luck. So there was a lot of controversy around her um, around this time. And then there was a Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles, a goal is manifested manifesting um so um to some degree um i think her wish was for her boys to kind of have a sheltered life and um it it, it was kind of like a a really mixed thing um yeah, a mixed blessing. Um, she passed, and then they kind of were sheltered from the public eye as much as possible for a while there. So, um, I guess in a way, it did happen where her kids were more, you know, uh, you know, in, in private, having a normal life under close watch of the family. But, um... Yeah, they stayed out of the public eye for a while, so a mixed blessing for sure. Then we have the world card in reverse. Um, staying somewhere because it is happy, not moving on. So um, 
I believe that the family was really like stagnant for a while because of this or it prevented some other emotional growth or connecting with other people because of this like they didn't know who to trust or there was some kind of um, some kind of this is bad this is bad this is bad this is good um, she would have wanted us to do this kind of thing like you're rationing your own life in order to um, kind of protect yourself and I believe that um, kind of um, went into a lot of the beliefs with um, the upbringing of William and Harry but how they translated it is very different um, and right now I think it's very you know, written in as, yeah, this is, you know, very different from how maybe the public would have viewed it or how other people may translate it, um, of how they translated their own life of protection and, um, being somewhat sheltered from others and how they react to, um, very public things, very, um, emotional things, normal life, things like that, um, and how they react to certain people. Um, so I think that does shape it a lot because they were really sheltered where they weren't really connecting with other people too much. Um, unless it was like recommended or whatever. Um, and we have the magician in reverse. Um, being easily influenced, lack of will, um, personal gain at the expense of others. Um, so there could have been a lot of um, things going on that were kind of not in the public eye, but they were kind of influenced um, to do these certain things, not these certain things, and it was just very... Um, very played out. Um, like the press needs something for ratings, but they don't need like a lot of things and the boundaries between, um, what can be made public and what can't was probably a very underlying theme. Um, but there was a lot of stuff going on at that time too, you know, the 90s. And that was August, um, 1997. Okay, so Eight of Cups, uh, running away from responsibility and friendship, a yin-yang of choices, um, leaving behind um, which is best for a person, abandoning a plan or goal, disillusion, uh, meant, um, making a great matter out of something that's very trivial. Um, so with with everything going on around that time, there was a lot of crazy mixed messages, a lot of boundaries being broken, a lot of people going in for the shot, as it were. There was a lot of independent um, photographers um, that were trying to get some money. Um, there was a lot of people that were kind of not on the up and up at that point. So getting a picture of the People's Princess big thing, um, any kind of scandal pictures were a big thing, any kind of, um, you know, first account, um, records or anything about the royal family around that time was a big deal. Um, so it was kind of like everything, um, came all at once. It wasn't like a gradual thing. It was like, oh, she wants privacy. Let's go take a picture of her because it would be worth more because nobody's had a picture of her in like about, what, two months or three months? And yeah, it was just insane. It, it was insanity to see the Princess of Wales in Paris, of all things, you know, and media went crazy. Um, anyway, 
So we got the Four of Swords in reverse. Activity, a um, cautious, being cautious moving forward. Um, gather of wisdom or counsel, a desire um, for the loss, backdoor influence. So there was probably some things that were um, uh, unexpectedly valuable. And that's really sad to say, but yeah, um, had the crash itself was probably a big thing. Uh, deception in all forms, trickery, deception, conjuring, bad motives, dishonesty, false friends, false pretenses, unknown enemies, a trap, being led to ruin. So yeah, there was a lot of, uh people that they surrounded themselves with that didn't have the best, best intentions, um, kind of leading them to, um, the princess's unlikely demise. I feel like this was somebody that was, um, gonna do the royal family in because, um, you know, it, it was like, well, why is she famous if she's not, like, in the public eye all that much? And, you know, I need to get food on the table, and the motives were like, I need to get food on the table, I need to go in for the shot, I need to get, um, you know, food on the table for my family. Because it's like, you know, it's, it's very mixed motives. Like, you can respect somebody's privacy, but you're talking royal, so it's like, it's pretty big. Um, it's not gonna be like, it's gonna be over when I say it's over. No, it's gonna be, it's over when everybody gets what they need. And it's really pretty sad to think about things that way in the 90s. It's very, um, it was like a rush time. It was very crazy. Like, all these celebrities passed around that time. So the Six of Swords. A journey, usually pleasant. Um, topping for a fast solution to a problem, success after many attempts, sometimes a messenger ex expedient, and the end of a journey. So the Six of Swords is what um, was the big thing with um, tarot card readers around that time, that they actually um, said that somebody was going to die an expedient w way. Um, and sure enough, it was her. Um, they predicted that. Um, I think it was under uh, Notre Dame's prediction and also um, like a local fortune teller. She was just doing a tarot reading out of sheer need to do a tarot reading. And she just put down her cards. She had like nature things. Um on her table. Like, if you put nature stuff on your table, it's like herbs, a tree, a tree branch, um, and like a shrub of some kind, and then like pieces of dirt and stuff. But, um, yeah, it channeled into an event that was going to happen soon, and, you know, sure enough, it happened like next day or like the next two days. Um, but it foretold that it would be, um, like the chariot, the six of swords, I think it was, and some other ones. But um, the chariot is usually a car um, in this day and age, and the six of swords is an expedient thing to an ending, a messenger, a journey, a thing like that. So it's very interesting to see the six of swords here and not the chariot at all. I got the wheel, though. The Wheel of Fortune in reverse, which is, you know, kind of... Eh. But yeah. Um, and then we have... <laughs> this is really... This really sucks. Um, we have the Angel of Death fitting for this, but it's still... Um, you know, with everything, all the events leading up to it, right here it's the Messenger, and then we have the Angel of Death, which is represented through an apple an ocean, a skull. So in this case, um, she was pronounced dead at the scene, which is really sad for the Princess of Wales. 
Um, but at the same time, uh, this is kind of me being um, a little bit of devil's advocate. I think it's better that she passed and that she wasn't like permanently disabled or like she didn't have, um, like she wasn't in a vegetative state. Um, I don't think the family would have liked to see her in a vegetative state. I really don't. And I don't think anybody else would have either. I think it's, um, probably not the best solution to die from a crash, but, um, just a little bit bumped around, maybe. Not full death, not vegetative. Just, like, oh, I have to go in because I, like, broke my arm or something, or my finger. Um, it would be, you know a little bit more of a saving face type deal. Um, like, it could have been much worse or it could have been much less impact. Um, so it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. Anyway, let's get to the astronomy of this, which, you know, and it's kind of morbid to talk about somebody's death, especially the Princess of Wales, but I'm going to say this. Um, Death days are more interesting than birthdays, if you know what I mean. Um, birthdays are kind of like it's creating the person and what they're going to achieve. On death days, it's kind of putting it to an end and seeking truth of the matter and what this person stood for, what their accomplishments were, and where they're going now. A lot of people they don't move on. They're usually ghosts. Um, but with Princess Diana, um, all her stuff was true to who she was. Um, and that was in the light part of her and the shadow side of her. She was a hundred percent herself all the time. So, um, and her shyness, timidness, her anxiousness, her excitedness, all that stuff was her. It was her completely unedited. Um, so if you ever look at some of the videos, like she's not hiding that she's nervous. She's not hiding that she's a little anxious or that she's curious or she has a question. She's um, very welcoming, but she's very like, oh, can I ask a question? And she's very personable. So you know, that's 100% her. It's not her putting on a show. It's not her being overly uh, diplomatic. She's actually being human with people, which is amazing. And that's how she could talk to so many people. So, in that respect, yes, I do talk about morbid things, but I also talk about the people. And I think that's what this segment's about. And this is actually the bonus video for August, so I thought this would be fitting. Um... So the first part of her message is this isn't really impacting you on a personal level, but it's stirring up drama um, amongst you and your people. Um, there are people in your crew who frankly are those that you've outgrown. Um, you know the kind, they're just there to take, 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 or they're there to get something out of it without giving back. Um, so, yeah, she was aware, <laughs> she was aware that there was something going on behind the scenes, um, using her, um, celebrity for something else. Mm. There's like five parts to her message. And here's the second part. Pull, pull yourself into the deepest parts of yourself over the coming months, coming months, and you'll be learning to shine um, some of this optimistic light on parts of your psyche that were previously hidden away in the shadows. So be true to yourself, um, even if there's some ugly parts that need to come out. Um, people like authentic. And then here's the third part. You are a worker, very steady in all you do. Precision is serious and seeks continuous work. Much like in the medical field, success uh, 
possesses all necessary qualities. So, um, yeah, precision, um, like just, you know, asking the question if you need to ask a question, or complimenting somebody, li living in the moment, um, getting work done, or, you know, getting to the meat of the situation, um, and actually knowing what's in somebody's heart and what, um, people stand for. Um, the fourth part is stay curious and innovative. Don't study for too long. Be, <laughs> be self-taught. Through your own experiences, intelligent and self-awareness allows you the opportunity to find tangents. So, yeah, being self-taught. She was self-taught, I think, to, for the most part. Um, she got to learn a lot about people and places and things um, in her environment. So, yeah. And then the last part is you just need a lot of imagination. High dealings and a touch of um, nostalgic is... Um, is to stay creative and come up with solutions and stay creative. Um, so yeah, um, and, and she was a very creative person. Um, how she raised her kids, how she raised awareness for certain things, how she talked to people, um, how she connected with um, people that might have not known who she was. Um, she would introduce herself, be on their level, um, be curious about them as much as they were curious about her. Um, so, yeah, and she made sure that everybody was included. She never, like, took somebody off to the side or anything. She wanted to include everybody in a group, um, as in group learning about her and stuff. Um, so... Yeah, this was Princess Diana, which, um, was very interesting. It's, it's a very shy, diplomatic, um, personality she has, but she has a lot to say. Um, she, she obviously thinks, um, before she, um, says things, and, um, she's, she's very calculated in how she presents herself and what words she's gonna say, and, how it's going to come across, um, but yeah, I mean, this is, if this is one of your idols, this is a very good idol to have, I mean, she's, she says a lot here, a lot of advice here that would help anybody who's dealing with, you know, self-confidence issues, or has a curiosity thing, or, you know, is creative, or has, um, daydreams about grandeur, um, and who's intelligent and self-aware, um, but there's a little bit of everybody in this reading, I mean, she wanted to address everybody who might have bad days or might have, um, skeletons in their closet that might be a little, um, hesitant to share some things, but it's how you connect with people, you know, um, some people have, really weird things going on, and some people may have very normal things going on, um, but it's how you connect with people, um, something that you don't like about yourself, people like about you, so, you know, take it for what it's worth. Anyway, as we know at this point, this is the end of the reading, um, I always love doing these. Um, with the celebrities, um, I think it helps people heal and see stuff in themselves that they didn't before, um, so I like doing, um, uh, it's mostly, you know, if I can't heal you, maybe your favorite idols or people that have passed on that you looked up to as kids would help you heal, and I think Princess Diana's a big one, um, I think a few other ones are big too. But depending on where um, you are in life, you kind of look at different artists, different music, different influencers, and um, 
kind of find, you know, yourself in a lot of people. So, um, I think this one's a good one to end August with. Um, anyway, I will see you in the next reading, alright? Bye now.